Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I got some new gear. I picked up this Native Instruments Complete Control ASS49 in the Machine Mark III and uh, it's pretty dope. I have got no idea <laughs> what I'm doing with some of it. I'm discovering there are a lot more features than I thought. But today I just want to talk briefly about why I got this new gear because I still, you can kind of maybe see it over there, I still really like the Nectar Panorama controller, but it just, it, it doesn't integrate well with Ableton. And having switched to Ableton as my main DAW now, I needed something that did. And this uh, Complete Control, while it doesn't have the motorized fader, it's got continuous faders. I can adjust the volume. on everything, on every channel, on every track. I can move between tracks or use the buttons up top to individually select tracks, which I actually think is better than the motorized fader that the controller had in Reason. And because I'm not really planning to use Reason anymore as a DAW, it just made sense to get rid of the controller. So I was thinking about getting this one, and I've been talking about how I wanted to push for ages and able to push. But I was doing some thinking about that, and how I tend to work inside a DAW is very, very precise. Like That's half the reason I switched to Ableton, is I wanted finer control on editing clips and that kind of thing within the sequencer. And I have like a similar mindset when I'm mixing. I don't like just randomly turning knobs or whatever, and, and so I didn't think I'd make the most of the push in that regard, and I already have a launch pad for launching things and uh, session view. But I do like cutting up loops and, and doing that kind of thing. And so I, I thought the MPC style pads is probably a better choice. Also, I haven't really ever done any finger drumming before and I did kind of want to be able to get into that and mess with that. And I wanted a good pad style controller because this doesn't have one. These two integrate really nicely together and I'm, I'm just, I'm very, very happy with this setup. Also, how dope do these black keys look? These are, these are nice. <laughs> Recently, I've got these two new controllers. The sweet version of Reason. There's a lot of new plugins and stuff I've got to check out. Because, oh yeah, this comes with Massive. I've never really used Massive before, but, but, hmm. Lots of new stuff. So. The plan today is I want to talk about how you can use combinators and reason to basically hack the fact that there are no presets for the channel strip rack extensions and then I want to make a little bit of a beat utilizing the new chorus and filter effects which I haven't really done yet so let's jump into it. Let's quantize all of that. Alright, let's add an instrument. We'll go with this hybrid. far more comfortable working inside Ableton with this controller than I was with the Nectar controller. The Nectar controller is just like a glorified keyboard inside of Ableton. It doesn't have any functionality. Whereas this, this is letting me get all, all up in the transport controls. You've got this lovely display. Oh, it's a fun time. So I want to try two things with this Reason Rack plug-in effect today. If we bring up the master bus compressor, Reason Studios didn't include a preset option, which is mildly annoying. So if I just put this on like... If I just 
set, if I set this up on what I usually have it set on. And uh, you can dial the ratio in. You have to do that every time. But what if I go combine, save patch, save it as uh, master bus template. Now, if I want that, all I have to do is pull in the combinator every time and it's there with my template. And so what I was thinking is, you know, we could also use this idea to create our own version of the channel strip as a combinator if we wanted. If I drag a reason effect plugin here, add the channel dynamics and the channel EQ and combine those, we now have a version of the channel strip. Now one thing that I did really like about the channel strip that we don't have here is the ability to see the audio spectrum analyzer. So I feel like I have, yeah, spectrogram, Rob Papin. I think this was a free one. We drag this in here. We can see what happens when we low pass. Or high pass. So while that's not quite as useful as the one we had in Reason, I think it goes a wee bit of the way there to getting us back the channel strip that we had on the SSL disk and the mixer. Because it's dope that we have the rack extension effects now, the channel dynamics and the channel EQ, but I think they were just missing a couple of things like presets and the ability to pull up the spectrum analyzer. But we can hack our way there with a free spectrum analyzer and it's not quite as functional as we can't, you know, sweep and stuff, but it's, it's pretty ideal. So I'm going to go and save that patch as my channel strip. You could add more or less if you want. Um, I'm just going to leave it simple for now so it doesn't use up a whole lot of my CPU. And if I feel like I'm missing anything using this channel strip, then I may add some more stuff to it. I may as well add my newly created channel strip to this one. Nice. So I said I wanted to do something with the new with the new filter and the new chorus effects. My struggle is I don't really like chorus effects. I'm not really sure what to do with them. And and something that I like. So I don't know what this is gonna sound like. Actually I do like that. That's cool. It's just dirtying up the sound a little bit. One thing that I want to try is splitting the output and recording the other output on a new audio. I'll show you what I mean. So, Spider Audio Merger Splitter, Flip Rack. Let's go from here into here and then this one into main and then let's add a sweeper modulation hello what just happened undo okay let's add a sweeper modulation let's go from here into the sweeper modulation and then we'll go from the sweeper modulation into this other output <laughs> So what I've got going on, my combinator is running into the quartet, which is running to the splitter, which is running to main output one. The splitter is also running into a sweeper, which is running into the second output, but you have to turn off this thing, which sums it to the main for it to show up in the effects send. Check it out. There is a particular preset that I really, really like called Broken Filter Robot. Which just 
sounds cool. So try Chuck a noise gate. All right, so now I'm going to automate this low pass. Let's just kind of do this, you know. Just even it out a little bit. These drums are sounding a little dry, I think. quick video going over how you can actually get some presets going using the channel effect rack extension things because Reason Studios didn't include a preset option and uh, try one of the free spectrum analyzers because that'll help you visualize what's going on when you're doing the EQing and stuff. I haven't really messed with those other two effects yet but you should definitely try out the broken filter robot because it sounds dope. Guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff to get my head around, but I am really enjoying having these two new controllers. So I shall be adding those to my list of things to explore in the near future. Here's a very <laughs> quick average beat. But we learned some stuff today. I'll catch you guys next time.